The UN says it's very concerned about the influx of weapons and ammunition to Ukraine, while Washington gives the green light to more F-16 fighter jets for Kyiv. After a recent string of public burnings of the Koran, Sweden has raised its terror threat level to four out of five. Poland's parliament votes to hold a controversial referendum, including on whether to accept thousands of migrants under a relocation deal with the EU. A triathlon event in Paris started with a splash with the swimming leg of the event taking place in the River Seine. A senior UN official has said she is very concerned about reports related to the transfer and use of cluster munitions to Ukraine. Speaking at a Security Council meeting, the United Nations disarmament chief warned many of those weapons could fall into the wrong hands and pose a real danger for years to come. Reports related to the transfer and the use of cluster munitions are very concerning. Spokesperson of the Secretary General has called for these types of munitions to be consigned to history and not to be used. Measures to address the risk of diversion of weapons and ammunition to unauthorized end, end users and for un, your unauthorized uses are essential for preventing further instability and insecurity in Ukraine, the region and beyond. At the same time, the United States has approved further military support to Ukraine. Media reports say U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has authorized sending the long sought after U.S. made F 16 jet fighters from Denmark and the Netherlands. Meanwhile, in the Netherlands, an exhibition dedicated to the youngest victims of war. On display at the Amsterdam City Hall, the diaries and drawings of Ukrainian children caught up in the fighting. A rare vision of the horror they've witnessed and which will stay with them forever. Sweden has raised the level of perceived terror threat to the country to high, its second most serious state. Acting on advice from law enforcement and security service leaders, the Prime Minister Ulf Christensen made the announcement on Thursday. It comes after a recent string of public desecrations of the Koran in the Scandinavian country by a handful of anti-Islam activists, sparking angry demonstrations across Muslim countries. Jag förstår att många svenskar just nu känner oro över innebörden av den nya och högre hotnivån. Och till alla dem, till alla er, så vill jag, precis som polisen säger, att vi ska leva våra liv som vanligt. Vi värnar vårt öppna samhälle mot dem som hotar det. Vi står upp för våra demokratiska värderingar, men vi skyddar oss. Vi står upp för vårt liv, vårt sätt att leva, men vi skyddar oss. Sweden and neighboring Denmark have recently seen a spate of public desecrations of the Quran, including burnings, which have sparked widespread outrage and condemnation in Muslim countries. According to the Prime Minister, Hezbollah in Lebanon, Al-Shabaab in Somalia and Al-Qaeda are among the groups that have called on their sympathizers around the world to avenge the burnings. He added that some terror attempts have already been averted, but he didn't go into details. Poland has adopted a draft resolution ordering a nationwide October referendum on the country's most pressing questions. The ruling right-wing Law and Justice Party wants Poles to vote on four key topics, including whether to accept thousands of migrants under a relocation deal with the EU. Donald Tusk's opposition civic platform party strongly opposes the referendum. It accuses the ruling party of trying to demonize opponents with loaded questions, while Tusk described it as invalid. Więc ja się bardzo dziwię, że platforma, no, która też w nazwie ma y, obywatelska, y, no, nawołuje po pierwsze do bojkotu. Sam Donald Tusk y, to referendum, y, zanim y, jeszcze zostało uchwalone, y, unieważnia. No, to oznacza, że bardzo boją się odpowiedzi na te y, pytania. Poles will also have their say on whether or not to dismantle fences on its border with Belarus. The ruling party has previously voiced concerns over increased migration pressure along its eastern frontier. Poland has recently beefed up security amid fears of possible provocation from Russian Wagner Group mercenaries stationed in Belarus. The Arrow 3 missile defense system, jointly developed with the United States, 
Washington on Thursday gave Israel the green light to sell the hypersonic system to Germany in a deal worth 3.2 billion euros. Arrow 3 is an interceptor designed to shoot down ballistic missiles outside the Earth's atmosphere. The defense sale, Israel's biggest ever, comes as European nations build up their arms in response to Russia's war in Ukraine. The final contract for the deal is expected to be signed by the end of this year, following approval by both the German and Israeli parliaments. Berlin expects the Arrow 3 system to be delivered in the final quarter of 2025. Extreme weather continues across Europe. On the Spanish island of Tenerife, an area of 26 square kilometers has already burned down and some 8,000 people have either been evacuated or are confined to their homes. The island's president says high temperatures have turned the area into a virtual oven. The eh, labores and operations that have been done over the night with many difficulties and much complexity, this is probably the most complex incendio we've had in Canarias, if eh, not de siempre, de, al menos de los últimos eh, 40 años. Officials deployed 17 aircraft and 350 firefighters and members of the Spanish army to tackle the blaze. The fire, which broke out on Tuesday night, is burning through forests in a mountainous region to the north of the island, a key tourist destination. They're racing to control the blaze ahead of increased temperatures expected over the weekend. Meanwhile, in Germany, these images show water cascading down escalators to the platforms in a Frankfurt tube station. Heavy rain in the region resulted in dozens of flights to and from the city being diverted or cancelled on Wednesday evening. The storm also caused flooding in other regions across the country. Sky-high numbers of migrants are arriving on Italy's shores, and the country's far-right Prime Minister, Giorgia Maloney, is facing increasing pressure at home. Promises she made during her election campaign about curbing the number of arrivals appear increasingly empty, as our correspondent Giorgia Orlandi explains. It looks like Giorgia Meloni's government is facing its first real crisis. Over 100,000 migrants, in fact, have arrived in Italy since the beginning of the year. That's according to Italy's Interior Ministry. And that's the highest figure ever recorded since 2017. And this year could begin to approach the all-time record of 180,000 migrants who arrived in Italy back in 2016. Giorgia Meloni's right-wing government came to power in part uh, um, on uh, pledges of a crackdown on people's smugglers, but also to stem the flow of migrants uh, arriving from North Africa. We know that the majority of these migrants are now arriving from uh, Tunisia, where a crackdown on sub-Saharan migrants, but also good weather conditions are some of the reasons why so many migrants now decide to embark on the difficult journey. Now, opposition MPs have accused the Giorgio Meloni's government of a manifest failure in its management of immigration, even more so after uh, Italy and the EU uh, recently signed a memorandum of understanding with Tunisia uh, which provides over 100 million euros worth of direct EU aid uh, to prevent migrants from reaching Europe. Giorgio Orlandi for Euronews in Rome. The head of the Maui Emergency Management Agency, who has faced fierce criticism for failing to activate disaster sirens during last week's wildfire response, has resigned, citing health reasons. Despite the backlash, Herman and Dyer defended not sounding the alarms, saying residents may have panicked and moved to areas where the flames were raging. Hawaii Attorney General Ann Lopez said that an outside organization will conduct an impartial and independent review into the government's response to the fires. The President of Angola has called on member states of the South African Development Community to speed up the ratification of a key fund aimed at raising finance for industrial investment. 
Jao Lorenzo was speaking after accepting the one-year rotating presidency of the SADC. Neste ano de presidência, procuraremos trabalhar de forma esmerada e com sentido de responsabilidade, no sentido de fazermos frente de forma unida aos grandes desafios presentes e futuros que a nossa organização tem pela frente. A questão da mulher e o seu papel no desenvolvimento integral da nossa região, com vista à construção de uma sociedade de maior justiça social, será um dos pontos importantes da nossa atuação. Lorenzo pledged to work on diversifying the sources of funding for projects and programs at member state and regional level. He said he aimed to reduce the region's dependence on international cooperation partners, although he said they were always helpful and supportive. One year before the Olympic Games in Paris, the world's best female triathletes competed in a test event. The winner was British competitor Beth Potter, who crossed the line first, followed by French woman Cassandre Beaugrand. The third place went to the American Taylor Spivey. The triathlon event runs until Sunday in the heart of the French capital, with the swimming portion of the race taking place in the River Seine, starting from the bottom of this spectacular 19th century Alexandra III Bridge and its golden statues. As for the Olympic and Paralympic Games, there are also plans to hold some of the competitions in the river. Water quality checks are carried out on the Seine before any open water event.